the very first thing that I do when I get my hands on a shiny new spoon is I grab a little mini split ring pliers, a pack of feathered trebles, and I swap them out to trick my jigging spoons. Not just jigging spoons, but more on that later. And I posted a little Instagram story the other day, and I was baby. sitting there swapping out hooks on some baits, threw up a snap. I got a bunch of questions wanting to know what size for different specific spoons. And instead of going through and answering 50 DMs, which I did as best as I could to get back to everybody, I figured, you know what, I should probably put a video together on this. So I'll try to keep this as short and simple as possible. But then also I want to have something out there so you know what size is for certain baits. Because that's the hardest thing. You, you look up a certain hook or swivel, there's 20 sizes and you don't want to order the wrong one. So here goes nothing. Uh, the number one thing that I do to all my jigging spoons would be adding that feathered treble. This is actually a dressed X-Wrap hook. It's the same hook that comes on the Rapple X-Wrap jerk bait you're throwing in the spring and fall for smallies, walleyes, whatever. But they've actually got some sizes that work just killer on jigging spoons. And the number one size is going to be the number six size. And this is going to work for, I would say, 90% of the jigging spoons in your box. That number six is going to be a perfect swap. Whether it's a 3 16 ounce tingler spoon, a quarter ounce rattle spoon, a eighth ounce tumbler spoon, the number six day in and day out is going to cover, like I said, probably 90% of the spoons in your box. And the reason, I guess, that I'm doing this feathered treble thing is I'm not big up on ripping off minnow heads and I think you're a psycho if you pretend like you actually enjoy that. Uh, also, it's pretty cold when you're going ice fishing. I don't want my hands getting wet reaching in a minnow bucket or whatever rinsing them off unless I'm catching a fish. Then I'm all good with having cold wet hands. But until then, I would rather not do that. <laughs> and this feathered treble, I've said it before, it adds a little extra movement, a little something for those fish to hone in on a focal point for them to hit. And under the water, these feathers just come alive, man. They like breathe down there. They're constantly moving. And you don't need minnow heads on jigging spoons to catch fish. The biggest thing is, you gotta keep that bait moving all the time. You don't have a live minnow down there that's gonna be adding motion, adding scent, adding vibration in the water. It's all gotta come from your jigging stroke. So always keep that bait moving, even if it's just little rocking and rolling, so that they can't sit there and get a really good look at it and decide if they wanna eat or not. Keep it moving, fool them, trick them into biting. And with any of this stuff and with any bait ever, you just need that one confidence day on the water. If you're out there catching fish and you're using minnow heads and the fish are lit up, I mean, they are snapping, why do you keep putting minnow heads on? You know they're gonna bite it instantly, which I get it, it's fun. But that's a perfect time to throw on a feather treble hook. And as soon as you catch a couple fish on it, your confidence is gonna go through the roof and you're gonna know like, okay, they actually eat this thing. <laughs> and you can try it out on your next body of water. Uh, most of the time, I am using the black nickel with just the plain white feathers. And now it does have some of that uh, I don't remember what you call it, hackling or spackling or speckling or whatever. <laughs> the shiny silver stuff that looks like the shimmy a shiner or fish would give off with their scales reflecting. And this is the one that I'm going to use three quarters of the times on all my spoons. It just looks lifelike down there. It can look like shiners or tulabees or cisco or bugs or whatever, but it just adds that little extra goodness onto that bait. But I have been starting to play around with some other colors. They have a red and a fire tiger color treble hook. And now lakes around here where I'm at in central Minnesota, perch is a huge, huge, probably the main forage base for walleyes on almost all these lakes. There's some shiners and, and whatnot and tulabies and a little bit of everything else. But more often than not, these things are eating perch. And that fire tiger color, man, that orange, yellow, green, and it still has that little shimmer in there, is a really nice option to add to some of these more natural, perchy looking baits. And red, 
we just know that red makes bulls mad just like it makes fish mad right it's it's that reaction bite that like wounded injured bait fish that little flash of red that blood trail and i don't know i've, I've had luck with it with some of these new white glows and it just it's a different look a different pop and uh they bite it but if you're only gonna buy one to try for your one confidence day, do that black nickel with the white, it goes with everything and they eat it everywhere. Now, on all these spoons, like I said, a number six is the size. If they made a number eight one day, I might use that on some of the really small jigging spoons, but even on say like an eighth ounce jigging spoon, you can get by with that six, it is small enough. And I'll bump up, uh, well, actually that same, that number six is perfect for jigging wraps. Let me see if I got one laying around here. Uh, I don't have a number six laying around, but that number six feather treble, x wrap treble, is perfect for the back end, the tail hook on a rip and wrap. Now I'll bump up to a number four if I'm using the big number seven rip and wraps on Winnipeg or what have you that four is perfect on the tail. And the reason I put the feather on the tail of the rip and wrap is with that, I'm trying to get bit when I'm doing that rock and roll buck and bronco motion. I'm snapping this two, three, four foot strokes, working the water calm, and then I'm stopping and I'm rocking it in place, rolling my rod tip without ever letting slack get in there. And it just kicks up that back end and that feathered treble just looks nasty in the water. Uh, the only time that you really have to bump up to a number two X-Wrap treble is like Winnipeg, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, some places where guys are using those really big profiled mega jigging spoons, three quarter and one ounce spoons, and packing salties on there or whatever, but just that bigger spoon, bigger chunk of metal, you're gonna have a better hookup ratio with that bigger gap number two hook. But otherwise, 90% of the time that number six will have you covered or number four on those big seven rip and wraps. Another little spoon tweak, feathered treble is kind of the deal, but there's a new deal that's <laughs> slowly becoming the deal in its own way, and that's the VMC bladed hybrid treble. I played a lot with this in the open water and finally got to use it on ice, and it is awesome. I was just up on Red Lake and I added a little bladed hybrid treble to the belly hook of a number six rip and wrap and they crushed it. And the reason I put it on there was because there was tons of little shiners that these fish were spitting up in the hole and I could see them on my electronics. I mean, there was some bigger shiners and perch down there too, but there was also these little ones that had the same profile as this little willow blade. And now what this is, it's a little, uh, there's a swivel built into the hook with a little willow leaf. It's a resin sealed swivel and it just adds a little bit of flash to your bait. And I know I said I like that X-Wrap treble on the back of the hook because it's that buck and bronco action, but I actually put the bladed hybrid treble on the belly hook. And the reason for that is I want this thing when I'm down there ripping it, it's, a, it's kind of a different action. I'm swimming that bait off to the side and really working it and that increased motion lets that willow blade spin and flash and kick but then at the same time when i stop and i do rock this bait in place you get that little blade wagging down there a little shimmer it looks like a little shiner and i've noticed especially open water too wherever you put this bladed hybrid treble on a crankbait or on a bait that's where you get hit so like when we were out on the ice those fish were smacking right where that was and it's more noticeable open water when you're trolling if you have that little bladed hybrid treble on the back, when you're taking your fish off, you'll see they're all on the back of the bait. But and then guys will move that bladed hybrid treble up to the front hook or the belly hook on a jerk bait, and then they're taking that whole bait or they're T-boning it. So it's pretty crazy to, to see the results of fish honing in and that's where they're hitting the bait. But really cool option when you're getting a little bit more aggressive. And uh, I'll use this on jigging spoons too. And the whole thing for me is I like feathered trebles when the bites average normal bite or fussy but if they're snapping and they're really eating you add that flash of that bladed hybrid and you can you can take a good day and make it a really great day and it's especially good for big fish i've noticed for sure 
As far as sizes go for the bladed hybrid treble, the number eight, the smallest size they make, is perfect for most jigging spoons. It actually pairs up really nicely on the belly of a number five rip and wrap. Now you can bump up to a number six on a little bit bigger jigging spoons, like once you get into that quarter ounce and up size, and that is the perfect size for the belly hook of a number six rip and wrap. And then I will bump up to a number four if I'm putting it on the belly of say a big old number seven rip and wrap, uh, that number four size is good. And the four size also works well with those bigger like half ounce, three quarter ounce chicken spoons. Next little tweak you can do, I've mentioned this one before. I think it gets overlooked, honestly. The little VMC Glow Resin Treble. And now what this is, is it's just a little, uh, epoxy resin drop you can see there and it adds glow to that bait and just a little focal point now i really like this if it's dirtier water or low light after dark because they glow you can charge them up and that glow will last for 15 minutes they've got five different colors uh, i really like the white and then the chartreuse pink if i had to pick two uh, they work great on most baits and i'll even use them on rattle reels or tip ups with the split shot up above it and tail or hook a shiner, just skin hook it in the back or in the tail and just have that little epoxy drop glowing down there. Um, size wise, I would say typically the biggest one that they make, which is a six, is what I'm gonna use on jigging spoons. Because you lose a little bit of the hook gap with that epoxy in there, I like that bigger size. I will use the next size smaller, number eight, on smaller jigging spoons that are say an eighth of an ounce and down. So no matter which of these you're using and swapping out, please invest in a mini split ring pliers because your fingernails, not even your fingernails, the inside behind your fingernails, the thing that if you bump, you're gonna scream, is going to thank you from trying to pry those off. I've used forceps pliers, they're fine. You can get by doing one of them on the ice with it, but you're gonna make way quicker work with this because it's actually designed to hold that split ring in place and pry it open and then you can swap them out so fast that you'll actually enjoy doing it versus oh man I don't want to my hands are cold I'm not dealing with it you get that thing in your hands and you'll just all of a sudden you've got feather trebles and bladed hybrid trebles on every bait that you own bonus points if you get bit and you miss the fish you don't have to reel up and rebait and that fish is gone with that feather treble, if you get a short bite, he swipes at it, rolls on it, misses it, you don't get a hook in him, your bait's still down there. You can continue to work that fish until you catch him or they peter off. Same idea is if you've got pods of fish coming through. Where I'm at in central Minnesota, if I'm set up in say a 16 to 18 foot weed edge, we've got really good flash bites where it's just a 30 minute window and that's your window to catch a walleye today. It might be 30 minutes at sunrise, 30 minutes at sunset, but between the two times, good luck. <laughs> and now with that flash bite, you gotta capitalize on every chance that you get because a really good day in reality is catching two or three walleyes or sometimes one. I mean, the reality for most folks, myself included, is you don't go catch 20, 30 walleyes or even 10 or 12 walleyes on a day. You're just hoping to catch one or two during that flash bite after work. And having that feather treble, if you catch a fish, you can get that bait popped off and I'll open my spool and drop back down there. As I'm managing that fish, my bait is already crashing back down to bottom. And then whether I'm keeping that fish, measuring it, letting it go, close the bail on my bait, reel up a couple feet off bottom. And a lot of the times there's already a fish looking at your bait again because those fish come through in pods, like little wolf packs. You know, it's not a mega school of fish, but there's two, three, four, five fish in one pod coming through. And it can absolutely mean the difference of catching two fish out of that pod versus one. So absolutely recommend adding it to your arsenal. It's definitely gonna help you catch more fish, bigger fish. And there's something just really fun about stepping up your game to artificials when it comes to something like that. Of course, there's a time and a place for everything. There's some days you need that minnow head. They're picky, they're fussy, you need that live bait sitting on a dead stick or, or rattle reel or whatever, but uh, play with this stuff. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it and you can definitely step your game up to that next level. Hey, you still awake? You still watching? Seriously though, 
thank you for taking time out of your day to watch these videos, to read those target walleye emails. I pour my heart and soul in them and I have a blast doing it. And I hope you are enjoying them as well. So thank you so much. Do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and like below if this was something that you thought was interesting or you want to see more of. And drop a comment below and let me know what you want to see next.